Hey guys, it's me, Trevis, with DFSKarma.com, bringing you a week two episode of Scoopin' Shares. That is the new name, very creative, very sexy name for the Jock Market Podcast. And joined with me is the number one player in the history of the world on this app. Goes by T-Rex, and we already know why. If you're not sure, go back to the week one video. He spent about 75 minutes explaining why he's concealing his identity. Uh, but T-Rex, I'm, I already know the answer to this, but for the people out there... How did week one go for you? Not great. Um, so if you're if this was your first week, if you you know played in it and you didn't do well, just understand that, that happens sometimes. So obviously it's not a guarantee. Um, but uh, yeah, not not good. It's kind of hard week one, right? Don't know um, what people are doing. I definitely was you know burned by Cam Akers and some other people. Um, Everybody, but we're back. man. Yeah, Everybody. We're back, back on the horse. <laughs> Cam freaking acres. So, uh, so if you are new to this, this is Jock Market. Uh, you can download their app by going to j o c k m k t dot online. Uh, that's sends you to the app. You download it, create an account, use promo code Karma. Uh, as you see above me, the promo is a hundred dollar deposit bonus and a hundred dollar money back guarantee. So, if week one was your very first market playing, uh, and you and you lost money, they would refund you, or they are refunding you, or if they probably by the time we recorded this, have already refunded you up to $100 of that loss. If you have not played yet, and this is the first time you're watching and this seems interesting, because it is, use promo code Karma, play week two, doesn't matter if you play tonight's Thursday night showdown, uh, a Sunday night showdown, a Monday night or main slate or anything like that, any contest. If it is your first time playing in the main cash markets, they do refund you up to $100 so you can get your feet wet without risking anything. And I recommend using... That full hundred dollars, because if they're going to give you money back only on your first one, make sure you spend at least a hundred dollars in those cash markets. There's no point in depositing, you know, a hundred bucks and then only using twenty dollars in your first market if you're going to get all of it refunded. Use it all. It's not proper brain girl strategy if you don't have money back guarantee, but because you do, use the hundred dollars. Uh, as you have seen on the screen here, this is uh, I have the, uh, the the site pulled up, the desktop version. We have Justin Jefferson finished number one overall in fantasy points scored for the main market. And as you can see, I scooped up 50 X shares of him at his at lock at the IPO. Uh, his average price was $7.32. Every share paid out 25 bucks. So as you can see, I made $884 profit just from those 50 shares uh, of Justin Jefferson. So the, what you see on the number, that, that row of numbers be, below his name, Shares, how many shares I have, final value, what was paid back to my uh, account after the whole thing was said and done, the your plus minus, that is the profit. If it's green, it's it's a profit. If it's red, it's a loss. The average cost, that's how much each share cost at lock. And the total cost, that's how much I spent to get those 50 shares at $7.32. So I actually spent $366 to get 50 shares. And then... Uh, Jock Market paid me back $1,250, which was a total profit, as you can see on the screen, 884 bucks. Now, this wasn't my total profit for the day, so what I did is I uh, did the same process as I mentioned in week one. I used the lineup optimizer on DFSKarma.com, one of our premium tools, and I just compare differences on where is this player ranked on Jock Market to, to finish, you know, uh, in projection, uh, fantasy scored. A fantasy points score projection and then where does the optimizer say he's going to finish and so i highlighted four players and justin jefferson was one of them on the optimizer we had a much higher than what jock market had him on uh, and then there was a fifth player eli mitchell who wasn't part of this technique i just know from the sunday morning uh live stream that we do which you can see on our youtube channel the same channel you're watching this on right now uh, that, you know, Eli Mitchell, because of the, the rain and the bears and all these other things, and Ben kept talking about him, like, you know what, I'm going to I'm gonna get some Eli Mitchell as well. We all know that turned out. This man died, more or less, <laughs> very early on. Only scored four fantasy points and lost a big chunk of change. Now, the other three people, they also had a loss overall uh, because they did not finish higher than uh, where I projected them to be when I picked them up at lock. But because Justin Jefferson made so much money... I actually had a profit of, I want to say, maybe 300 to 400 bucks for the day, which made me finish 8th overall out of the entire world. So everybody that's on this app right now, I finished 8th overall on the Sunday main slate, which was crazy because be the Justin Jefferson game, I think it was a 4 p.m. game. And so through 1 p.m., I'm like, oh, this is going <laughs> to be a red start. 
but then Justin Jefferson goes bananas, and I was like, oh, hey, look, I made profit. So, yeah, I actually finished eighth overall in profit for Main Slate. Um, but we are going to be talking about here today, for those that are watching this before Thursday Night Football, uh, which you should because there's a lot of good tidbits for Thursday Night Football. We're going to be talking about Thursday Night Football, and then we're going to be splashing some, any if we have any uh, Sunday night looks or Sunday Main Slate looks, if you will. Um, let's just get right to it here. So let me go ahead and pull up thursday night so well well before we get there i mean did you okay, all right did, did you bid at the at lock on jefferson because i i missed him at 728 and he goes for 732 so my 14th place finish I, i'm gonna blame that on you oh yeah i i did not do any live trading at all everything i did was uh ipo so that was 50 ipo shares of jj so take it oh something else we want to highlight as well jock market on social media posted this uh it was monday night uh, Jerry Judy was the number one finishing fantasy score for Monday night. He had that amazing long touchdown. That was ridiculous because I was really hoping that was going to be somebody else. Um, Cortland Sutton, I prefer to have been that player. But regardless, Me too. Jerry Judy finished number one overall, which paid out every share at $25. No matter what marker you're in, the first top finisher gets 25 bucks paid out per share. But they were mentioning in the social media post that Jock Market did that his shares, his IPO, how much he cost for the single game slate, was eleven dollars and one cent, and this is something that I mentioned on the last uh, podcast we did that T Rex got mad at me about because it's a se- it's an elite secret that only the top players really pay attention to, is never bid the whole numbers. So if anybody said I'm gonna bid eleven bucks on Jerry Judy, they got zero shares of them. If you played the Trevis tidbit from week one and bid eleven oh five or eleven oh six, or just something that's not that full whole number you would have got all the shares you needed because he went for 1101. Uh, so that one cent difference cost, could have cost you hundreds of dollars of profit. So make sure you're never bidding 50 or 00 or even like 025. If it's an if it's a denomination of a US currency aside from pennies. So no nickels, no dimes, no quarters, no dollars. Only bid pennies. Don't bid the fives that it, it, long story short, don't have it end in a 5 or a 0. Um but uh, but yeah, so live trading, I did not do anything of. I know we didn't talk about, we haven't really ever talked about live trading on any of these podcasts. Um, it's something that I don't do too much of on my own end. Uh, typically Sundays, I'm just watching the games. But um, but live trading is possible. And what that means is after lock, this con- the games, the, the, the way to win does not stop. You can actually buy shares of a player after they score a touchdown. Or you can buy shares of a player you know, after they, they they rush for 100 yards or whatever it may be. The one thing I want to make, and I won't go too much into this. I know T-Rex wants to probably add a few more uh, tidbits on it. But the main thing that I stress, if you are, are an NFL or MLB fan or NBA fan, and you go to the games, it is the easiest way for you to get your how much you, whatever you spend on your tickets back if you have this app pulled up in your hand. If you go to the game tonight, the Chargers and the Chiefs, and you have, uh, let's say, uh, you have you know Mike Williams pulled up, and you you have uh, you're, you're bidding to get 20 shares of him in the middle of the game, and you can see him wide open, about to catch this ball. As soon as that ball hits his hands, and you see the referee's hands go up, signaling a touchdown, you tap that button, and you automatically have a greater chance to get all of those shares prior to them exploding in price before anybody else so long story short this app if you go to games is a no it's already a no-brainer but it's a guarantee you will guarantee make money if you go to a game and you bid on a player at the millisecond something happens because you have faster access with your eyes and your hands than people that are um watching like espn uh, game center or watching the game on nfl sunday ticket uh so we can go into that if you guys have questions uh, regarding that stuff, but T Rex, is there any live trading stuff you wanted to cover at all? Yeah, I mean that's so true. Um, you know, I've I've had uh, ideas of let's just get somebody in every major market to go to the game and, <laughs> yeah, you know, and do that somebody to every game, and we win. Yeah, I mean it doesn't work as well in football, but things like baseball for home runs and hockey for goals because they're so expensive. Now hockey can get dangerous because you think the guy scored the goal and actually got tipped up front, but it is a little bit of a cheat code, but it kind of is limited to you know your ability to see it and how quickly you can get on the app. But so, yeah, I mean I. I, I was going to say, I'm coming in there real quick. I was going to say MLB is 
is the biggest guarantee. They're all guaranteed no-brainers. They're all guaranteed profits. MLB is huge because it's one batter at a time. So if you have, let's say, um, yeah, some random ninth in the lineup guy that's in the jock market pool, let's say he's up to bat, you can you can automatically pull him up on the jock market app. You can say, you know, whatever, let's say I'm going to bid 50, 50 shares at whatever uh, a price would be that after he hits home run would be nice. You have it set up on your phone you know it's a home run before anybody that's not at the game knows it's a home run because you see the ball going into the stand and before somebody can actually log this guy just hit a home run you can smash that button and you can buy shares of them you it is it is 100 percent impossible to lose money at a baseball game on jock market uh unless you're bidding something crazy but if you're if you're bidding intelligently and you're there and you can actually get those shares before before uh espn updates if you will uh i i can't wait i, I think i'm going to the browns I might be going to the Browns Dolphins game, and I will prove that point to you. I will I will do a screen recording of exactly what I'm telling you at the Browns Dolphins game, which isn't until like week eleven, week thirteen, or whatever. I don't even know Ooh, what it is. Yeah, that'll be fun. But uh, but yeah. So anything else with live trading before we start talking more about Thursday night? Yeah, I mean, I, what I would say is, especially the players that are higher, you know, ranked higher up. So for you know Thursday night slate, maybe your first like six guys. If there is a heavy amount of bidding going on, it, you know, you're, you're bidding and getting out bid and you're bidding, a, you know, 30 cents or 50 cents or a dollar more getting out bid again. Those guys almost always will be somebody will be requesting or putting in a buy price for more than your IPO after the IPO locks and before the game starts. Now, it may only be 50 cents. It may be a dollar. But, you know, if you want to sell those and shed those immediately just for a guaranteed profit, I do that a lot. If I get 100 shares of a player and then, you know, immediately after the IPO, somebody wants them for a dollar or two more than I paid, I'll shed 10 or 15 of them just to kind of take the guaranteed profit. You yeah. do that, obviously, at the risk of them, you know, finishing first, which will really burn your biscuits when you see that later. Burn but it, your biscuits, this man said. Yeah, it's gonna give you a, it's gonna give you a, you know some some decent returns. So you can kind of grind your way um, if you're not willing to you know put a lot of shares out there because yeah, you buy 50 shares of a player that goes bust or gets hurt, it, it can be brutal as I witnessed this week. But that's kind of a trick. The other thing I would say is always just if you're looking to do in-game trading once the games have started, you know if a player scores, especially if they're in the early slate, people tend to like forget that there's a whole bunch of players that are going to play later on. Typically those buy prices will go way up right after they score and you can kind of get rid of them then, especially if there's players later that can jump them and, and it's early. I love that trick. I think that's a good one. I typically, when I buy shares, will put, you know, 10% or 5% of them for sale at a really high buy price, just in case somebody gets too aggressive. Um, but, you know, it's it's totally up to you. It is not something that you're going to be able to game very well. If your guy is just a complete loser that day, nobody's going to be really out there trying to buy him for more than your IPO. But it's a good way to sell for less than the IPO if you think he's going to return way less than that, just to at least save some stuff. But I would say kind of watch it before you really dip your toes into it too much. You can go to the activity uh, board and kind of see the people that uh, players are putting buys or ask prices in. Um, you can't see the amounts, but you can see who's kind of active and if that's helping them or not. But you can get really – you'll see some players. There's a good, you know, six of them that I know off the top of my head that are always buying and selling. And that can work, but very few of them I see on the leaderboard. So it, it can be quite dangerous. And the thing – so I know that we stress, like, if this player finishes number one overall, they get $25 paid out. So I, I what, the reason I focus on that because you don't have to pay attention – like I bought 50 shares of just uh, JJ IPO and I bought some other a good chunk of shares from some other people and I didn't do anything and I still made, you know, a couple, you know, I finished eighth in the leaderboard and profit for uh, for Sunday main slate. You don't have to do anything, but if you're able to do something, there's always something you can do that will increase your odds at finishing in profit. So, so here's an example for Thursday Night Football. Let's say uh, we're targeting Mike Williams. So Mike Williams, we're going to get him. Uh, we have, let's say he finishes at, for, for the single game slates, it's weird pricing. So let's say he finishes at like 10 bucks. Probably not the case, but let's just say for this argument, he's going to finish 10 bucks. Every share you buy is at 10 bucks. So I'm going to buy 50 shares for $500 total, 10 bucks each. Mike Williams, in the first pass of the game, 
gets a 80-yard touchdown pass and automatically shoots up to the number one top score, the live score, because, of course, he had just got a crazy deep touchdown pass, um, and he scores an insane amount of points. So you bought him at $10 a share. He's probably going to shoot up to something like $18 a share because there's still most of the game left where he cannot become – if it becomes a high-scoring game, a lot of players can finish above him. But – if he shoots up to $18 a share, if he gets a deep bomb on the first play of the game, mm-hmm. I can sell those 100, uh, those 50 shares that I got for 10 bucks at $18 each. And because I don't feel like doing math in my head right now, 50 shares with eight, and if I sell all of them for 18 bucks each, that is $400 in profit. So if I buy him a 10, he scores a touch on the first play, and then, then I'm like, you know what? Even if he finishes first overall, he'll get 25 bucks. Let's just say maybe I don't think he's going to be targeted that much or he's not going to finish up there. Let me just get rid of all of them. Immediately, people are buying him at 18 bucks because they're going to hold on to him for that $25 payout. $400 off of one play. You can profit very easily on this game if you just pay attention to what's going on. You don't have to wait till the end. And especially in the and when it's the multi-game stuff, or not multi um multi-game but if it's like the main slate where you have 1 p.m and 4 p.m games you can sell off all your 1 p.m guys if they did really well and you're worried about 4 p.m guys overtaking their standing uh for fantasy point score just get rid of all of them take a profit call it a day so yes you do not have to wait yeah and that would dovetail on something else especially if you play a, a full slate you know there are players out there that will have let's say you know a large portion of their uh, players or maybe all are in the early games and maybe they don't do well usually right before the the i guess afternoon three o'clock four o'clock whatever time zone kickoff a lot of those players you'll see bid prices start to creep up because people are basically trying to double dip or get back action in the game so if you've got a you've got a player and maybe you're doing well you you usually can sell players before they play even after other players have played because people are trying to get activity or maybe they they saw low scoring in the in the noon or one o'clock games and they think it's gonna be higher later but that's another good trick yeah and it's just uh as you said ducktail off of that so Here's another example when it comes to MLB, main, mainly NBA. So let's say, for example, uh, like I know we mentioned LeBron James or you know uh, an NBA player that's a uh, game-time decision, but when they play, they destroy, they score an insane amount of points and potentially can finish number one, number two overall. So let's just use uh, LeBron James here as an example. Um, so LeBron James is a game-time decision which is making his price a lot less because people don't want to buy him for eight bucks. And then he finishes with a payoff of one because he didn't play. It's a huge risk. But if you buy him at $8 a share, let's say you buy 20 shares, eight bucks a share, and then he does start. And then the news comes out, he is playing. You'll see his price goes through the roof because now one of the potential top finishers for the entire slate is going to be active and playing full minutes before the game even starts, you can make yourself a pretty nice profit. There's so many things you can do on this app to make profit. And remember, as long as it is not a, gr- a red number, as long as the number is green, even if it's a penny, you win. You're not competing against anybody else. You're not trying to get the top profit spot. That's not your goal. That's just a nice upside if you do. Your goal is to finish with the number, as I've shown you on Justin Jefferson, where it's green. Your number is to show your total profit with a green number. As long as it's green, you win. If it's a penny, a quarter, a dollar, 500 bucks, $10,000, it's a win. So th- there's so many things you can do to get a win in this game before a game even starts, as we mentioned. But let's go ahead and focus now that you uh, you you have entertained us by watching us for this long. Let's go ahead and focus on some Thursday Night Football. So as I mentioned, I personally use the DFSCarmer.com lineup optimizer. I don't see anything too crazy. Uh, the first thing that jumps out at me is players not to bid on uh, because they are ranked a lot lower on our optimizer. And I trust, as I mentioned a million times, I trust our optimizer more than I trust Jock Market's projections. Uh, Austin Eckler, I believe, is three. He's three three right now on Jock Market. And we have him at five. And so that's enough for me not to focus on him. Uh, T-Rex may have some other interest with Eckler, but I know I'm not going to focus on him. Uh, who else is a little too high here? Let me just go ahead and scroll through. Um, I don't have it in front of you. I would guess probably Edwards Alaire. Edwards Alaire on Jock Market is seven, and for us, he's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and not too different. Yeah, uh, I think Palmer. 
Palmer is eight on Jock, but he's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, he's, yeah. So there's, there's with the single game showdowns, it's like a one to two player. Uh, one pretty much it's either one spot higher, or one spot too low. But if you find like the twos and threes, especially in the top ten players, those are the ones I usually target. But for this particular game tonight, there's none of that. So T Rex, what are you looking at? focusing on for this game slate and do not say camp makers because that did not work out well no camp makers did not work out well um no nobody's perfect um i like um i like a lot of the wide receivers in this uh in this slate um although both running backs are, are excellent uh pass catchers as well i mean i think it's obviously going to be a, a shootout which means it, it, it could easily be a seven six game but i mean I, I, perhaps i'm just a Nicole hardman like apologist but I follow him probably to the, to a zero in my bankroll, but I like this spot for him here. Um, didn't do much, I think, in the last uh, game, but, I mean, Nico Hardman has the same Tyreek Hill kind of capabilities. He's obviously not as good, but he's got kind of some of the same capabilities. I like that a lot. What I really like in this slate are some of the guys at the very, very bottom. I mean, the very last one with Horvath as the fullback, and he scored last week. He actually got, I think, like four or five touches, which is pretty good for a player that's, you know, projected for less than one fantasy point. Yeah, I'm probably – I'm going to throw, you know, a dollar and some change at, at players like that. I love Fortson, too, as the tight end. Again, scored last week. Um, you know, try not to chase him, but as long as they're a dollar, you know, 40 or below, those are always uh, worth it for me. Um, but then, yeah, on the top side, I mean – it's it's a it's a hard slate. I mean, I followed Williams last week, um, and that didn't work out very well. Obviously, Keenan Allen is out, and so Williams kind of shoots up a little bit more. Um, I think Palmer is going to be heavily overbid, as will be as Carter will be too. I think people are going to think, you know, I've got some cheap, you know, elevated wide receiver twos, wide receiver threes. I likely am going to stay away from them because I typically don't want to overpay for kind of those uh, you know, tangential upside risks. Um, so that will probably leave me with Williams. Um, you know, I think Mahomes is a great spot too. I just think he's going to be, he's going to be close to 18 bucks, I think on an IPO given last week. And those are just way too dangerous on the quarterback. Cause as we saw last week, interceptions can really pull a quarterback down. Um, obviously they, you know, they get four when a wide receiver gets six, but those interceptions or fumbles, um, on a sack or anything like that can really pull a quarterback down and they are the most volatile. And I, I just rarely ever pay up for a quarterback because of that. Something I wanted to mention uh, from all of the data and the predictions that we have, uh, particularly on the betkarma.com side as well with player props, is this could be a hit, this could be a home run, or this could be a, a big miss. But Sky Moore, so we have the APIs from all of our partners, including Pricebooks and Monkey Night Fight. You cannot currently do anything with Sky Moore receiving yards on either site but we have the data that was fed before they took them off the board, off of the uh, the front end, off the app. Scott, before they were taken off, and which I f there was such a discrepancy that it, it's like being flagged all over the front end of our of our uh, price picks predictor tool called the SPF predictor. Sky Moore, before he got removed, his, his line for receiving yards was 7.5, but on Monkey Knife Fight, it was 30.5. Our projections, I think, for his receiving yards player prop have him somewhere around, I think, 35 yards receiving. Now, I don't know if there's just crazy data coming in from him, which is causing a fluctuation and that much of a difference. Uh, so I don't know if there's just like, I don't know. I don't know if something got into the to the wire, if you will, and screwed things up. But, I mean, if we're projecting him at 35 yards, that's, you know, 3.5 points. He needs to catch the ball to get 35 yards. That's 4.5 points. Uh, assuming he catches not just one 35-yard pass, let's say he's two for 35, that alone right there is 5.5. So we already have him higher than, uh, based on that projection alone, higher than his 3.62. So I'm going to be monitoring him and his price. I hope that he finishes really cheap because our optimizer has him at three points as well. Jock has him at three points. But I feel like that crazy fluctuation that caused both of these fantasy prop apps to completely remove his receiving yards thing, I feel like there may be... There may be a golden nugget there. I don't know what it is exactly, but I definitely have them flagged for my favorites, as you see on the site here. Um, do you have anything on Sky Moore, T Rex? Yeah, I love Sky Moore. Um, I mean, he only had one target last week. He caught it, and it was for 30 yards. So you kind of, if you extrapolate that out, I mean, he's definitely a deep threat. Um, yeah. I, I think this is going to be a high scoring game, but I, I'm just like you. It's like any player that gets hyped 
Sky Moore got so hyped, at least in season long, and I was preparing for that for drafts. You know, I, I just I really try and stay away from those guys because they tend to get bid up. But you know, single game slates more than any other slate is really, really price dependent. I mean, if you go back and look historically, the guys that kind of fin- finish in the middle. Um, so I would say like, you know, sixth place to 10th place, which can be, you know, $4 or we'll say fifth to 10. So $4 all the way up to 10 are usually just within a point of each other, or sometimes less than a fantasy point separating everybody. I mean, it's two yards or one catch, even, you know, a catch for no yards, like a bubble screen or some smoke screen to a wide receiver that can be enough to make change it to three, four dollars. Sky Moore is a perfect candidate to finish kind of right there in the middle. And then of course it'd be burst one long. Then he, now he's looking at fifth, fourth, or third. Um, so yeah, I like it a lot, but I'm not I'm not overpaying for it. I'm not going to limit my ceiling. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the I'm hoping that he finishes at a price to where his ranking and projection is, because that means if he if he does somehow if if our if the the crazy discrepancy in the the partner API uh, data points comes to fruition, he actually gets you know let's say ten points and he finishes maybe like tenth overall, then that's a huge. A uh, huge plus there. Um, uh, Isaiah, I believe he got a touchdown last week, right? Pacheco? Yeah. Uh, I think he got a, like a goal line carry and he turned it to a touchdown. Let me see. Does it say it on here? Yeah, he did. 12 attempts, 62 yards, one touchdown. I see it now. 12 attempts. Yikes. So, I mean, Kansas City was up by a ton for quite a while against Arizona. So, I don't, I don't know if I can chalk that up as just saving uh saving Clyde Edwards uh for for the future of the season and just putting in somebody else or if he actually is I don't know I didn't I didn't really pay too much attention to that game uh in terms of when he got those 12 snaps so I have to I have to use our our brainiac Ben on that one um but the fact he's only projected for three points and he had 12 carries last week I mean he's he's do you think he's worth a look or do you think that's just a, a week one fluke with how heavy they were up yeah, I think it was probably a fluke. I mean, McKinnon got, I think, you know, four carries, but then he also caught three balls and four targets out of the backfield. Yeah. You know, in single game slates, a, a, another kind of great trick, and it depends on the team, is always – I sometimes last year would grab the second running back on both teams just mm-hmm. to cover a blowout, to cover a injury or even just a minor injury to your lead back or just a hot – or a hot hand type of thing. You know, you can you can get yourself into trouble if you take too many of them. But I do kind of like the McKinnon slash Pacheco slash Kelly. You know, kind of Sony Michelle, your second and third running backs just to cover. Because I mean, this game is I think is going to be high scoring, and I think it easily could be a blowout one way or the other. One team gets up on the other, and then that forces you know the team that's down to kind of get a little bit desperate. All of a sudden, you get interceptions, and then how do you you know run out the clock when you're up? You run the freaking football. Yeah, I guess I didn't think about that. And think about just, you know, in case there's a blowout and then you're you're the studs that you're heavily invested in aren't getting any shares. You have both running backs and you kind of balance that out in case that is. And, of course, the backup running backs are cheaper, so it's easy to balance out and cover your butt on that end. Yeah, it's kind of um, like the – it's kind of like a variation on when you do, like, uh, draft kings, right? If you, you take a running back, you typically will take their defense as well. While we don't have defenses and kickers in jog market, I kind of do it as, well, give me both backup running backs just in case. I got you. Uh, is there anything? I know you said you, you hadn't really looked at the uh, the Sunday main slate yet, but is there anything for Sunday that, that's already in the back of your mind? Like I'm probably going to look at this, or I'm probably going to look at that. Not really. I mean, I was looking at my week one and two market. I mean, I'm I'm up, I think 100 or 150 right now. Um, and I'll tell you that I, I, we'll have to do a, a special on that at the end of or next week for this kind of week one, week two, because some of the pricing is really hilarious um, after one week, especially for players that did super well and shouldn't have, players that should have done well and didn't. But, I mean, yeah, not really. I mean, so it, I, just found, I just found something. So I, was, I had the uh, optimizer pulled up for the main slate. JT, which you see on the screen, JT is number one overall on Sunday main market. He is number seven overall on the optimizer. That puts JT at a hard stamp fade. That is seven. He is seven spots lower. And with typically when you're looking at the top ten players, which is what I like to focus on, because there's a higher payout if you're right with uh, that twenty five dollar per share. Yep. Um, if you're in the top ten, 
and there's a seven difference between what our projections are saying and what Jock's saying. I'm going to say that right now. That jumped off the gun to me. JT, stay away from that IPO. A little nugget yeah. for you. Yeah, I think that, yeah, that's definitely right because the risk is just super high and the exponential growth or increase in return value for per share is so much higher at the top that that's where it carries a lot of the risk. Trying to see if there's anybody that stands out as someone you do want to target. So Christian McCaffrey, CMC is is three for us and six for um, Jock. So I'll probably just star him for right now. Uh, I'm going to see if I can find anybody else in the top 10 that's crazy different. Uh, da, 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 da. Derek Carr is four for us against Arizona, which Patrick Mahomes literally destroyed. Uh, he's four on ours as the number four overall score for Monday main slate and he's eight and quarterbacks typically tend to hover around typically with quarterbacks we mentioned this on the first one more often than not the top five scoring players are quarterbacks not all quarterbacks there's a lot of, i meant to say there's a lot of quarterbacks within the top five and top ten so if you have somebody that has a four spot difference from what we're saying is going to happen to what they're saying is going to happen that's always somebody that i'm gonna try to get a, a lump sum of the shares in um is there anything so i know we're talking about sunday right there but is there anything that you have left for tonight for the people that are tuning in early yeah i mean i i would say i think it's going to be very top heavy i think it's good i think the at least the ipo is going to be very slanted toward kind of the top four or five guys i think there's going to be value in the middle and i think there's going to be serious upside value toward the bottom um you know these teams have star players defenses could key on them freeing up kind of some of your lesser known players um, but again, on, on single night slates, you know, that tight end that blocks for 80% of the game and catches two passes and one of which is a score can get you right into the middle of the table. Um, I love players like that. So, I mean, I'm going to be heavy on a lot of those type guys. I do. You probably have convinced me on Sky Moore, at least to uh, watch the pricing monitor on there. It, yeah. Yeah. At least to monitor it. Um, but yeah, I mean, it just kind of depends on, you know, you'll see sometimes like Clyde Edwards Hilaire or somebody that's it's hyped down, so to speak, where their pricing is low. And I, I may hate the player, but man, if that price is right, I'm going to be doing that. So I think this one's going to be very, very price dependent. As always, if you want the 24-7, 365 access to the top two players in the world on Jock Market, myself and T-Rex, you want to get into the Discord because there are free channels. We do not charge for anything in terms of for Jock Market. We don't charge for the plays. We don't charge for the podcast. We don't charge for the access to the channels. The more the merrier because, I don't know, I, I, I feel like sharing the fact of how free the money is on this app is, is uh, it's going to be closer to the front gates of heaven. <laughs> so I'm going to share all the good stuff about this, uh, help you guys win on your end. Get into the Discord if you're not there yet. Go to dfskarma.com slash chat, or if you're on the website already looking at it, uh, you can click on the chat room button. Just click on chat room. It'll send you there. It takes you to our Discord, and you'll see automatically when you first get in there that there's a bunch of Jock Market channels. Jock Market NFL is, of course, what we're focusing on. Um, if you have a question about MLB or NBA, you can ask questions there as well. But, um, but yeah, that is all of the nuggets you get for this one. Any last words, Mr. Dinosaur Man? Michael Hardman's going to score two touchdowns tonight. Two I'm gonna, TDs. I'm going to stamp it right now. Two touchdowns for Mr. Hardman himself. All right. So what you're saying is I need to outbid you on 6 million shares of Hardman. Got it. Yeah, Got right, it. At the, right at the buzzer like you always do. Yep, that's what I do. I'm the single-player sniper. All right. Good luck, everybody. Hopefully everybody's green screen. Not green screen. Screen is green. You know what I meant to say. Uh, but good luck. Click the thumbs up on this video. Subscribe to this channel. And we'll see you guys next week for a little week three scoop and shares. Good luck, guys. See ya.